Okay, for the record, uh, we're going to start the hearing uh, scheduled for uh, 6 o'clock on, on October 29th uh, for the memorandum uh, of, uh, of the city. Do we have anybody signed up? Yes, sir. Your name, sir? Joe Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Hello, everyone. I'm uh, Joe Ben Elizondo, and I'm here to speak on the ordinance 2019-5, adopting on the uh, moratorium to suspend and accepting permits to mobile homes and manufactured homes within the city. Mobile homes are a major resource for millions of people, many of which satisfy national construction and safety standards similar to traditional housing. Despite these similarities a, and national safeguards, barriers against mobile homes are becoming more common. Mobile homes account for 8.6 million in this country, which is about 6.5% of the national housing inventory. According to the U.S. Bureau of Census, American Housing Survey for the United States, about half of all mobile homes are in rural areas. Consequently, the southern states have more than the national average. <clears throat> there is a significant cost advantage to manufactured homes. When structure, transport, installation, land, and development costs are included, one study found the total purchase price of a manufactured home might be as much as 75% less than the cost of a traditional home of comparable size and quality. Despite the cost advantage of a manufactured home as a source of affordable housing, one study found that oppressive ordinances by municipalities has a negative effect on affordable housing within the community. That negative effect is total exclusion from residential zones. Municipalities create these restrictions because of community and resident concerns about safety, quality, appearance, occupants, price appreciation, and the impact that these factors are supposed to have on neighboring property values. Courts upholding to zoning barriers and the denial of residential use of mobile homes or manufactured homes often quote those objections as the basis for their, their decisions. Opposition to manufactured housing takes on the typical not in my backyard syndrome. With neighbors, with the neighbors rising in opposition and putting pressure on municipalities, boards, and legislative bodies to deny approval or adapt restrictive ordinances. Studies show, however, either that there is no basis for these objections or that they are irrelevant to zoning regulation. As noted before, manufactured housing costs less than traditional housing. So the demographic characteristics of residents of mobile housing have lower incomes than the median average. Residents of manufactured homes also tend to be older or younger than residents of traditional housing. Though there has been a rapid growth in minority occupancy in recent years. This data suggests that residents of manufactured homes are a respectable segment of the housing market. If lower income or age is the reason for opposition, a reduction or decrease in mobile homes would not be legitimate. Community members, mobile homes offer a lower financial barrier for family stability and offer a safe path for future home purchases. Thank you for your time. Anybody else? Good 
Good evening. I'm Eddie Elizondo. The, I was just informed about, uh, we're developers here, we, and I, I know a lot of y'all here also are familiar with the developing process. I wanted to, I, I hadn't been to any discussions as to what's going on or what's the proposal. I know y'all want to pretty much eliminate mobile homes from here on out in in the in the within the city limits. So I, I'm here pretty much to find out what's going on and see if uh, if something can change as far as the, the one the reason could it be the code enforcement the codes um, someone maybe not implementing the proper codes to let's say the mobile homes, not necessarily eliminate the mobile homes, but as to how can this be better? What our target audience, I know, I don't know if I can ask questions, if I can ask you guys questions, but I know some of the developers here uh, or representing the, the companies, what do you all uh, target? What's your, your restrictions on, on these neighborhoods? And most of you all are from what I know, I don't know about your neighborhoods, uh, Mr. Salate, but uh, it's uh, pretty much peer, uh, foundation slabs with minimal square footage on homes. Yes, mine too. Right? Uh, so what we target is we're targeting the lower income uh, community, the less economically advantaged uh, community where they can, in order for someone to come and buy one of your lots, either your own or financing them, but if they're gonna build, they're gonna have to go through a regular conventional mortgage uh, to, to borrow against it unless they, they build it out of pocket. Okay, what we're offering is most of our, our our families that do buy from our communities don't have that opportunity to go to a bank. They don't have that opportunity to lend, to borrow 50, 100,000, whatever it is. We're giving them that <clears throat> opportunity to step away from, from not living in the, in the projects, not living within the housing authority, even though they're beautiful facilities, but within their pride, they don't want to. They don't want to live under the government shadow. They'd rather go and cut grass, live in a little mobile home, and say that that's their property. Okay, by you taking this away, you're pretty much segregating. You know what? The less economically disadvantaged people, y'all need to move out. Sorry, y'all need to move out and out into the country and then out to the, to the farm area and away from the city. Is that fair or that equal to them? I don't think so. It's, it's not that we want to take away from the city. I was just informed yesterday that that wasn't what I thought, but it's not that way. I don't know if we can get somebody here to, to, to clarify this uh, uh, ordinance, but it's not that we, you can't. If you already have it, Correct. you can still yeah. put mobile homes on it. Okay, if you already... If you already have the subdivision, you can put mobile homes on it. You can still continue to put mobile homes on it. Okay. And, but any new development? Or I can sign up to speak with the city manager, but I can probably clear up a lot of the questions. Okay. If it helps, yeah, I can sign up to speak. It's up to the board. I, I would rather you speak, Mr. Perez, because I was like you yesterday. Mm -hmm. But as soon as I talked to him, I was... Because it's not... Sabes que ya no queremos ni una trailer en el pueblo. It's not that way, but he'll explain it in a bit. Okay, and that's how, how I understood it, but of course, I haven't been involved, I haven't, I haven't listened to, to any of these meetings or attended any of them, and I wanted to, I guess, get clarification before you all make a decision or, or maybe we can get 
some output from or from some input from people that currently have had that opportunity to uh, to purchase and, and grow. But yeah, it'd be great if you could clarify sure. some things for us. I, I as a member, I think it's important that either somebody from the city, either you, the city manager, or Gilbert, at least during the public hearing, represent what this ordinance is. Mm -hmm. I mean, my name is Alberto Perez, I'm a city manager, and, uh, and I, I appreciate, you know, the uh, information you provided. Uh, it's not that we don't believe in mobile homeowners and that we don't support them, okay? Uh, what we're trying to do, obviously, if you've been around the city, we have no zoning, okay? So without any zoning, uh, anybody can, and I'll give you several examples. We have several open lots in the downtown district, the historic district. Anybody can pull up a trailer. And there's nothing out there that's going to restrict them or stop them from doing it. And they can be next to a very nice historic site. As you know, the city, uh, you know, prides itself in having being a historical uh, city. And so if you start mixing trailer homes with historic home, uh, buildings and all that, you're going to take that away from the attraction. And so all the intention behind this ordinance is not to stop and keep you from bringing mobile homes in. Okay? What we're looking for is a moratorium to, uh, if you have a trailer park, we welcome trailer homes and trailer parks. What we're trying to avoid, and I'll give you another example. We have a, we're about to kick off a ground uh, breaking uh, and, uh, on Monday on this new development across Walmart. It's supposed to be, you know, the latest and greatest, you know, buildings and so on and so forth. And we're looking at attracting customers from the, not only from the area, but from outside the county to come and shop here in New York City. And there's about four or five or six lots across the street. Nice homes. But there's empty lots. And right now, there's nothing stopping anybody that owns those lots from coming in and putting a 10 or 15 year old mobile home. And so, all we're trying to do is put some, something in place that will allow us to manage that a little better. So, if you have an area that you already have mobile homes and they're accepted in that area, we're not saying you can't continue to do that. All we're asking is be considerate of these areas that don't have any mobile homes right now. In, in, and keep that in mind. So if it's a historic district area, and we value that as a city because we attract actually people from up north to come in and visit the city because of that historic attraction, we want to keep that going. And so if you have a, and we, we value by the way, the folks that live in trailer homes, they provide their own way and means and they don't rely on the government, we concur with you on that. So we're not trying to detract you from going there and, and supporting that, and this is all we're asking for. So we want to restrict the areas that don't have mobile homes right now, that are, are not feasible to having mobile homes. Uh, keep in mind, for example, if you were to own a $150,000 home and somebody has an empty lot next to that $150,000 or $200,000 home and someone can pull in a trailer home next to your house, what is that going to do to the value of your property when you try to sell it? So that's all we're trying to do, maintain values and keep it uh, you know, on the up and up. And plus, not keep people out there belong in mobile, that have the ability to buy a mobile home and grow in a mobile home, okay? With all due respect, they bring value to the city and the economy. So we're not trying to diminish or minimize them by any means. Make sense to you guys? Clear? Now, because we don't have zoning, we have no other way of telling any property owner, no, you can't put your mobile home there right now. There's nothing stopping anybody from pulling a mobile home anywhere in the city at this time. So you could have a very nice uh, private neighborhood and they sold a lot. Yes, there's some restrictions, but you're gonna probably end up in court, you could. And until we get zoning in place, uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to answer questions back and forth uh, because it's gonna be presented to you guys, obviously to council tomorrow. But the intent behind this is not to keep mobile homes out. Okay, that's all. We're just trying to limit it for the right reasons to maintain the property values, that's all. So if there's a, uh, if, if you like copies, you can, uh, because it, the moratorium hasn't been presented to council, after tomorrow you can actually request uh, public information and you get an extra copy of it. And you'll see the intent behind it. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, just to just ask the board, uh, thank you for that information. It was really helpful. Uh, I'll probably
of requests is it's just I was having a hard time finding a lot of the details to it. Uh, again, thank you very much. Uh, and uh, I forgot to thank you guys for letting us speak. But more importantly, listening uh, to us because uh, we represent communities uh, that are in the outskirts. Right? And so with zoning, uh, I know a lot of the growth. I grew up in the Oregon City about 18 years. Uh, and so I know the growth is happening this way. And I understand the importance of zoning and time development. Uh, and so, if a, a lot of the zoning and the restriction and the permitting, and the permitting is going to happen in the growth where Star County is happening, or Oregon City is happening, the east and the west corners, uh, you know, if that's the proper zoning and, you know, it allows us to, to still work within maybe not necessarily the, down, not, down, not the downtown district, maybe not those areas, but where we see growth and it's that zoning, maybe it'll just work just as well. Uh, but again, uh, thank you for listening and above all, uh, hearing us. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Did it get clear to you, sir? Yeah, sir. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, it's pretty clear, which is, I guess, uh, it kind of puts, puts, puts us at ease, and I understand. That. So when you say there's no uh, enforcement, or I don't remember the word that you said, as far as, uh, Thinking more as far as codes as to the type of mobile homes that are going into the, into that, that would be at the discretion of, of the city code enforcement. I would I would think so, right? After the what can, after the fact, so once you finish all your subdivision, if you want to build new ones, then it will come through us. Correct. But as to what's going in into these subdivisions, like any new subdivisions, exactly, it would be. Okay. You're going to come for preliminary and final, and they'll approve it here. If we're here, but it's going to be us. If we're not here, it's going to be another members of the, of the zoning, planning zoning. Thank you very much. Thank you. Anybody else? For your information, we are a recommending board. The ultimate say so would be city council, which their meeting will be tomorrow. We just recommend to them. Okay, we don't have anybody else. I'm gonna adjourn the hearing. And we're gonna go into the meeting. Director at 628. Uh, we're gonna start the the, the meeting. Uh, we're gonna do the roll call. Mr. Gonzalez. Present. Mrs. Alinda. Present. Uh, Antonio. Present. Antonio. Present. Present. Uh, we have a quorum. Uh, we're going to do the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, item number three on the, on the agenda is discussion and possible action to recommend approval for ordinance 2019. Adopting the enticing and moratorium to suspend the, compet the acceptance, the acceptance of, permits. Of, of permits and approvals, and approvals necessary for mobile homes and manufactured homes within the Rio Grande City, Texas, in accordance to Texas Local Government Code Chapter 212. Mr. Chairman, uh, this is again this uh, proposed ordinance is to consider and or act on the adoption of a temporary moratorium to suspend the acceptance of permits and approvals necessary for mobile homes and manufactured homes within the city of Rio City, Texas, in accordance with Texas Local Government Code Chapter 212. In order for the city to have adequate and reasonable time to review, evaluate, and revise the city's ordinance, 
and uh, zoning plan and their potential impact on development and redevelopment, the city desires to implement a moratorium period for 365 days. This proposed moratorium suspends the acceptance of permits, authorizations, and approvals necessary for subdivisions, site planning of property development, or construction of mobile homes or manufacturers' homes within the city of the city. However, a uh, property owner might request waiver to the temporary moratorium by submitting a written application to the city with the reasons for the waiver along with the, the supporting documentation. The request must be submitted to at least five business days before, but not more than 10 days before a regularly scheduled planning and zoning commission meeting. Planning and zoning might recommend to the city commission either approval or denial of the waiver application if on or more of the following conditions are met. Undue hardship, the track is subject to a written development agreement with the city. In other words, there's subdivisions of metals individually and pending projects, complete application for one or more permits that were on file with the city before the moratorium becomes effective. Uh, on uh, section four of this proposed ordinance, there's a list for the undue hardship. Uh, hardship. The, uh, uh, in, the, in the subdivision case, the practice is subject to a written development agreement with the city. In other words, subdivisions will still be presented to the city, but they would have to specify the use and obviously uh, recommended by from PNC to city council. And of course, pending projects, in other words, the rest of the land that was previously developed as is. But uh, like the, our city administrator said, mostly the target is to uh, the original townsite areas where basically we have no teeth at this point to deny a permit where again you have you can have a historic building uh, nowadays we we just issued a permit for an 8,000 square feet home uh, and then there is no if there is no uh, subdivision restrictions basically they're entitled for to apply for permits as it is in this case, they can still apply. It doesn't mean that obviously they're going to be able to get any permits. Okay. Let's say I go to Alvarez Road and uh, there's no, I buy a lot over there. Mm -hmm. This is not the, the, the town site here. And I apply to put a mobile home there. With this ordinance, could I put a mobile home over there? They will have to apply to planning and zone. That's why. Yeah. Okay. That's why but it they, says here they individual will, cases. They will, they will be given the opportunity to, to apply. do it. Okay. Yeah, but each case would have to go through planning and zoning before, uh, and then obviously ratified by city council. Yes. How would it affect older subdivisions already established? They would have to apply. Again, same process. The same process. But if there's already mobile homes in that, it's going to be up to us to decide yes or no. Correct. No. If there's already mobile homes, they can still finish what they have, yes. right? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Let's Whoa. say like, like, um, in in a neighborhood, there's homes in one street, and then behind them there's a mobile home, and maybe the rest are homes, or maybe on one street there's maybe one or two mobile homes, and yeah. but maybe mm -hmm. the lot next to me is empty, and they want to put a mobile home there. But I would, I personally would not want that, well, but. Unlike the complete subdivision, which is basically all the lots, this one will be on a case-by-case -case basis application so can, to PNC. Yes. In other words, that will be individually observed. Okay. So but this it, is within the city limits. This yes, is within only within the city, the city limits. Even, even though the subdivision uh, has a uh, <coughs> regulation that uh, accept mobile homes, they still need to come in here and uh, no. ask for a permit? Not those. Uh, well, uh, like I said, most on all the cases, like if there's if it's a trailer park, it will be allowed automatically. Uh, the rest will be on a case by case basis applied to planning and zone. Okay, because I know that I think there's a subdivision that allows mobile homes. I think it's like maybe one of the doinos or something like things. I think I've done paperwork or I've done something that I remember that I read the restrictions on the deed. Yeah. I don't know. I think and it said that I know that they said they can't put a bar 
or oh. that type of thing. It's on the deed, yes. but it says that a mobile home is allowed. Will those be on a case by case basis also, yes. well, even though it's on the on the? I'm just asking. Yes, and that's, a, that's a good question. Uh, let us remember that these restrictions are not enforceable by the city uh, court enforcement stuff. These are obviously civil uh, contracts yes. between developers and the, uh, the end user. However, in this case, it would be a, a one-on-one -on -one application to planning okay. and zoning, saying, uh, do you accept a mobile home in this one lot? Okay, yeah. I just okay. wanted to... What, what uh, criteria are you going to be using like for denying or accepting the, the you permit? you give that to us? Uh, again, uh, you might want to look into the restrictions. There's all you know, a lot of things to consider. Obviously, building codes. There's a lot of suggestions to the planning and zoning board. Go for it. Uh, going back to the to the actual the the agenda item, uh, it says that what's the difference between a mobile home and a ma manufactured home? Mobile home, what it says, like the name says, is it's a rolling, it's a, it's a trailer house basically. Manufactured home could be a wood frame home. So it's both. Yes. But uh, uh, it's more uh, the uh, mobile homes, basically on wheels. And going to the next statement there, it says, in accordance with Texas Local Government Code, Chapter 212, foot section. Yes, sir. Uh, see if the attorney's put it. We would have to find out with legal the exact section. All right. Obviously, chapter 212 is the whole thing about, you know, the city's okay. uh, ability to, to uh, regulate subdivisions. But I mean, I wonder what specific right. section says that. And only because we're a board and we're a recommending board, we're going to recommend to the city council. Yes. And of course, I mean, we don't want any liability coming back on ourselves. I mean, I think there's a lot of, there's still a lot of questions that, that need to be answered and moving forward in something like this. Uh, you know, you can, we can talk about what's the difference between mobile home yeah. and a manufactured home. We can talk about what the specific section says that we have the authority to approve that. And going back to, to what the, I guess the, the uh, conditions would be to, to approach, even to come to approach us to ask for a variance or I guess a permit, uh, you know, so you have the undue hardship. Uh, well, going back to the waiver, it says that they would have to come before the fifth day and not after or not before the tenth day to the next regular meeting. I mean, that's a hardship in itself for somebody to come out here and figure out when our meetings are and and figure out when are the 10 days. I mean, I think if we could remove that and just, you know, if they came in and applied and the next, the next meeting would be available for us to hear that, uh, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd like to see that change. Uh, the second thing there is the track is subject to a written development agreement within, with the city. So obviously there are no written development agreements within any subdivision within the city because most of the most of the subdivisions were done before 1994 before the city was even incorporated so i mean that to me is telling me that a a subdivision that has come to us after incorporation and has said this is a mobile home park which i don't know of many but i mean we wouldn't have a written development agreement on let's say like the Elizondo's development out, out over there behind the old, the old water plant or the old water office. Uh, you know, and they're a new development, but I don't think you all would have an agreement with the city that said you could put mobile homes. I mean, I think that's just between them and their, their customer. And they can build a home if they want to on, on your subdivision. But they can also put a mobile home. And, and I think a lot of people start off with mobile homes, it's it's affordable housing. Uh, you know, 
I kind of thought about that when I was thinking about this whole deal is, do we have enough affordable housing within the city to say, well, you can't have a mobile home, but we've got this other affordable housing for you guys. I mean, it, it, I think it's early. I mean, not, I don't think we're at the point to where all oh, this, this is to be done today and tomorrow there's a city council meeting. I would like to have more time to look at this and actually hear about what the, what the whole intent of the moratorium is. Um, you know, there's a couple things that I just, I, I, I could be with it because I understand what the mechanism is going to be for, but uh, I think there's certain things in there that, you know, if we approve it, I mean, we might have some liability to as the fact that, you know, we're saying that no mobile home and no manufactured home is allowed in the, in the city limits. And even if you came for a permit, I mean, it, it's saying here that you would have had to have had, you would have to prove a hardship. You know, some people just prefer to live in a mobile home. So maybe you can't prove that hardship. And then the second one is that the track of land, you know, being the Elizondo's property or any other subdivision that doesn't have restrictions, or have, I guess they have restrictions, yeah. but minimal restrictions, uh, that they would have had a written agreement with the city. And I, and I don't think that there had been enough planning for that. So that, that second statement in itself would, would kind of keep us from approving anything. You know, I, it didn't matter whether it was next to the commercial development or in the downtown area or out in, you know, back, you know, subdivisions where, you know, it, it really wouldn't matter. There's already other, there's already other trailer homes there that'll probably be there for the next 20 to 30 years or more, you know, and, and uh, you know, we're going to say no to, to these that we know what the intent is for, but we're also going to have to say no to those because these statements are kind of going to force us to do that. You know, so I'd like to see some of this stuff cleared up and I think maybe legal should have looked at this a little bit closer and we should have had a little bit more answers to as to what exactly we're approving tonight. Anybody else? Okay, uh, with that being said, uh, do we have a motion for approval? Motion dies for lack of nobody motion. Okay, uh, I guess you know what happened here, right? The motion died, died as right now. Uh, I don't know if Dennis wants to make another motion as to you want to have legal come and give us yeah. a workshop or something. Uh, you know, I'd, I'd like to set up a workshop and maybe even with the city. You know, I know what the intent is. Uh, there's just certain things that before as acting as a board member of this board that I could, you know, put myself out there and say, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll take some of this responsibility or liability on this. But, uh, you know, I, I, I think there's just a couple of things that in here that we could tweak and, and come back and maybe, maybe approve something that'll work for, for everybody. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I know two personal friends that, that lived in mobile homes. They still the best friends of mine or good friends of mine. And, uh, and for me to come back and say, well, nobody would need to have that kind of upbringing or living or, or starting off, uh, you know, would be hypocritical of me to do. So uh, I'd like to move forward with it uh, with a little bit better language and an understanding of what the mechanism is. And so I'm going to I'm going to make a motion to see if we could set up a, a meeting and uh, not approve it at this time, but maybe table it for another meeting. I'll second the motion. Okay, I have a motion to table it and see if we can uh, make a workshop uh, to have a couple of things uh, tweaked on the ordinance and have legal uh, fix the, uh, the wording on it. I have a motion, I have a second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed, same sign. Uh, motion. 
Not, it could be con nosotros right, nomás, y luego we'll yeah. recommend. Because yeah, yeah. it's still going to go through city council tomorrow. Okay. 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 Uh, yeah, I mean, if you want to set up a meeting next week, I mean, we can come back and do a workshop in conjunction yeah. with an actual meeting. We'll have and get something approved right away. But just let us know, and and we'll be back then. So, uh, out of curiosity, when did you all get a copy of this work? This I mean, moratorium. I got it on Friday. I, believe. I got it on Friday. Yeah. It's Friday, people. Yeah. I got it on Friday. It's Friday. I didn't really look at it. I did talk I to, saw it. to Gilbert on Friday about it. Once yeah. I started looking into it, I, I mean, I just had questions. Yeah, I, I, you the yeah. I got it on Friday, but I was making, I'm, I think I, I didn't call yourself, but I called your office and I was put on hold for a while and then, I mean, I can't be on hold, but I called just for, for clarification. Sure. And um, yeah, I have a problem with the information I gave to you sooner. And that's important for you to make a decision that you know, based on what you were already understood. And we tried to talk about it before, but we neither of us had a clarification on it. Yeah, and, right. and we tried. Um, and then uh, I, I think I called Melissa. Or I called and I don't know, Melissa. I don't, Melissa didn't answer, but someone else did. And they put me on hold. And I just I couldn't get past that. So uh, we'll set up the Yeah, I mean, we can do it as soon as possible. I mean, we can do it next week. We'll do it next week and set up the meeting in conjunction with the workshop, maybe 30 minutes or an hour later, okay. get it done. Okay, uh, Mr. Lizondo's, uh, the item was tabled. Uh, that means uh, we're not gonna have no action on this item as of today. They're gonna table it tomorrow too, so you don't have to come. We're gonna have a workshop and we're gonna try to tweak it a little bit as to where it's not gonna affect where there's already mobile homes. So, so as of right now, everything's on hold. In other, in other words, it's on hold. So we'll let you guys know when, when the next meeting's gonna be. If you want, also wanna gonna come and, and, uh, and hear what, what changes was made to the ordinance, you're welcome to come. But as of right now, the, the item was tabled. Fine. Okay, anything further? Okay, meeting adjourned. 648.